But in actual fact, you know, I used to run uh, the eye bank at Moorfields Eye Hospital, Eyes for Research. And you can actually open a patient's eyes up when they're dead. And you can look at the color of the lens and you can get a rough idea of how old that person was. Mm -hmm. So one of the one of the surgical procedures that you know, medics love is um, to replace a cataract, take an older person, um, they've got this thick brownish lens and pop it out and put a clear lens in. And the instant response in 90% of them is, wow. In the patients. Yeah. These are live patients. Yeah, live yeah. patients. It's done under a local anesthetic in, in older patients. They just go, wow, isn't that amazing? Suddenly they're getting a lot more light in their eye. Mm -hmm. Because the lens was brown, it blocked a lot of the blue wavelengths. And so they go, everything is very bright. Everything's very sparkly. Um, and it, it was it was quite a dramatic response. But the interesting thing is, two days later, they said, "Yeah, uh, it's gone," hmm. and and the brain kind of re re adapts that visual input from from the retina. Um, but going back over the literature of replacing cataracts is quite interesting. It tells you actually, you know, quite a lot. Now, when we put those plastic lenses in, we have UV blockers in them, so that the amount of so you don't actually get a lot of short wavelengths coming through. Um, but there was certainly the response in the earlier days when we didn't have UV blockers of people saying, God, that's sparkly. I that's see. really sparkly. Yeah, the, the sparkliness being those short wavelengths, yeah. um, like think of off the top of water on a really sunny day. So I think the takeaway for me is that we should all be protecting our skin against too much UV and other short wavelengths. And we should probably protect our eyes against too much ultraviolet exposure over time.